Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Photo ID may be the new way of protecting your funds. Also tonight, the CNMI Senate is looking to update the building code. And more amendments have been made to the CNMI Cannabis Act of 2018. In sports, NMI Tennis powers its way to more medals at the Pacific Games. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. phone you want now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Looking for a truck that's reliable, durable, and a great value? Then drive Tacoma. Tacoma is Saipan's most popular truck. Look around. Everyone drives Tacoma. That's because 9 out of 10 Tacoma trucks sold over the last 10 years are still on the road. If you drive a truck for work or play, you need Tacoma. Good looks, rugged styling with the latest technology, and power when you need it. After all, Saipan is Tacoma territory. Hoffa Day, Tirwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Thursday, July 18th, 2019. Up on Capitol Hill, the CNMI Senate has approved Bill 21-6, adding a step in protecting credit cards and debit cards. This bill will require anyone using a debit card, credit card, or any cash exchange at an establishment in the CNMI to show photo identification. The Senate bill was created by Senator Francisco Cruz, and eight members voted yes, while one Senate member was absent. Very important uh, for me, it's prob problematic if we allow, continue to to receive a complaint from the members of the general public and, and, and we don't address the concern or complaint. So I think it's important that any establishment should, you know, uh, ask for valid ID, especially people that that, that, that card or credit card because does not belong to them. But looking into an ID, you can, you can you know, match the card with the, you know, the valid ID that does belong, belong to you. Like I said, even though some cases that cardholder authorized members of the family, but there's time that they will take the card without any authorization. So there's complaints in, uh, in, in, in the public in, to, in, in regards to that uh, issue. If a cardholder wants to allow a different individual to make a transaction, Cruz says a written statement would have to be given to the store for approval. Another bill passed in the Senate today is 21-3, updating the International Building Code in the CNMI. Senate Bill 21-3 is to change the International Building Code from the 2009 version to the 2018 version in the CNMI. Now, the initial bill was um, to uh, move from 2009 to 2012, but we were able to, um, uh, to update that to 2018. Now, these recommendations, of course, came from um, uh, US EPA. Um, uh, FEMA also um, recommended that we, we make this, this change, um, as well as DPW. Eight Senate members voted yes, while one member was absent to the passage of this bill that will create new standards to how buildings and houses are structured from now on. What this does is it allows us to receive more um, federal funding for natural disasters. Um, and also what, what will happen is uh, US EPA will, will actually have a staff um, 
which they will pay um, that will be stationed here in, in, in the CNMI for um, I think a year or two to help with the implementation of the code. Um, this is huge. It's a, um, I mean, putting in the the regulations and, and, and the updates and the changes in the code is, is, is going to be huge for everybody. A major factor in the decision to update the building code is for weather safety concerns. We are seeing that it'll provide more safety for our community. Um, as we all know, we've been through several um, typhoons, uh, um, natural disasters in the past several years. Um, we're hoping that the change in the code will um, will enable residents to build um, a stronger, uh, be more resilient, um, as well as commercial buildings. Customizing the code for island efficiency. The 2018 implement implementation of the IBC will be um, will be crafted um, um, uh, based on the uniqueness of, of of our jurisdiction here in the CNMI. So, like I mentioned in in session, you know there 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 are some. Um, clauses in the in the general um, code of 2018 that covers say snowstorms or tornadoes right we don't have to we, we, we can't relate to those um, uh, those sections in the code so those will be actually um, you know taken out and and we'll be building uh, the code um, based on our our special needs here 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 on the island this bill now moves to the CNMI House of Representatives for either modifications or approval. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. The House bill to make changes to the Cannabis Act of 2018 has been amended once again. Cannabis Act of 2018 is a law to legalize cannabis possession and consumption by adults and creates a cannabis commission to regulate sales in the Commonwealth. And House Bill 21-13 is to amend this Cannabis Act or Public Law 20-66. The bill has passed back and forth between the House and Senate with each legislation making their own amendments. And the Senate has made some more changes of their own, reinserting some of the omitted provisions, one being... With the substantive changes that, that, that we took in the committee, I would like to just kind of highlight the, you know, as far as the, the, the commissioners being a full-time uh, working commission members, uh, they're going to be compensated at 55000 uh, per annum. Uh, and we also inserted a language in there that they, if they are appointed and confirmed, that they cannot be working as government employees. They need to, so if you are a government employee, for example, and you got confirmed, and the point in a confirm, and then you must uh, resign from your, your public agency employment, which you're really working at. Another amendment made to the bill is for 25% of tax collected from the cannabis tax account to go straight to the CNMI public school system. For every time that we, we have a, an opportunity to help our public school system, uh, especially PSS, NMC, and NMTI now. Uh, it's important that we we try to uh, assist them in any way we can. Uh, of course, the general fund gives us a uh, uh, constitutional mandate of 25% of the general fund. This is in addition to that. And one more major change that was made to the bill by the Senate is? The others is basically uh, the citations of... Uh, the head of the entity, which we went from executive director, we insert down managing director. And then, of course, some of the, the, uh, the provisions of the law, of the le legislation uh, governing the how to go about, if, if you are a, a, a uh, cultivator or you must heat some uh, registration uh, by the commission. The bill is now off to the House to either approve the Senate's amendments or make more of their own before being sent off to Governor Ralph Torres for a final approval. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. The CNMI Senate has approved House Bill 21-44 for a $15 million loan through the Marianas Public Land Trust. The loan was requested by Governor Ralph Torres to financially support the bond obligations and retirement fund settlement payments. And that is how House Bill 21-44 was born. And although there are some concerns from the Northern Marianas Descent Council, the CNMI Senate passed the bill with seven yes and one no. Now the bill is off to the Governor Ralph Torres for approval. 
Coming up, gambling establishments may be seeing a change in rules for locations. Found out more after the break. Get your daily serving of 4G LTE data with it &E's daily prepaid plans. Choose from the best priced plans in the Marianas. Get one gigabyte of data for $2.50 a day or choose a $1.50 or $2 plan. Need more data? Top up! Get 100 megabytes for $1 or 1 gigabyte for $10. Visit any it &E store or call us to learn more and ask about our prepaid loyalty plan. it &E. Explore your world! At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, Call the hotline at 287-8537. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Despite the recent austerity measures taken by government officials, the Marianas Visitors Authority will be maintaining regular office hours in Saipan, Tinian, and Rota. Employees of MVA will still reflect a schedule of 72-hour pay period, but will be granted flexibility to days and hours work to maintain the normal eight hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. A release date, the MVA office is also open to serve the public during lunch hours. For more information, contact the MVA office at 664-3200. The CMI may soon be seeing a change with the poker establishments. House Bill 20-13 proposes to amend the zoning law, which has been passed by the Saipan and Northern Island Legislative Delegation, SNILD. One of those amendments being that no poker establishment can be 200 feet away from a daycare facility. Another major amendment that was passed by SNILD to the zoning law is striking out the requirement for 200 feet to be between two adult gambling operations. It means that uh, by striking that uh, provision uh, 200 feet from two poker parties, it means that several poker parlors can be a house in one building. Right now, the, the law, as it stands right now, uh, this allows uh, pokers to be, uh, uh, two poker vendors to be in one uh, building. Uh, it, uh, they, they have to be 200 feet away. Now, this provision uh, and amendments that we have made uh, allows uh, several poker parties to be in one place and which is it's a good intent so that we can put all these uh, uh, poker facilities in one place if possible. These amendments are now off to Governor Ralph Torres for approval. On Guam, more debt is being taken on for an expansion to the landfill. KUAM reports. Half a day, Sidamari, here's what's making news on Guam. GovGuam is taking on another $30 million in debt as it successfully floated a bond today to pay for the construction of a new cell at the Lazan landfill. The governor says it shows that investors remain confident in the local economy and it's why she continues to oppose a rollback of last year's business privilege tax increase. Nestor Lacanto reports. 
Antelope says investors gobbled up the general obligation bond to help expand the quickly filling landfill. The strong demand lowering the interest rate by 25 basis points to 3.25 percent, saving about a million dollars in debt service. When the investors in the global market have confidence in our government's financial stability and we have a good uh, rate, uh, those are all very positive things and that I don't think would have happened if the 5% uh, GR, GRT, BBT is, in, is not in place. The governor is talking about a proposed business privilege tax rollback to 4%, strongly supported by business leaders at a hearing yesterday on Senator Jim Moylan's bill. They say the 25% increase, which was only supposed to last six months but has been extended indefinitely, is hurting small businesses. But the governor remains opposed to a rollback, saying federal tax reforms created a $58 million revenue hit that the government can absorb. It isn't a result of improper government spending. I think we are very responsible in our budget. Our budget uh, is maintained at the 2019 level. She says her administration is working all the angles to spur the economy and boost tax collections. The governor says a financially solid government is also good for business. If you allow government um, to pay its obligations and um, that all goes back to vendor payments, vendor payments are vendors are businesses. Um, tax refunds gives more buying power for our community. What do they do with that money? They go and buy more groceries, they go and buy a car, they go and, you know, um, have more spending money for entertainment and other kinds of goods and services. Stay connected via our KUM mobile news app, follow us on any of the social media platforms, and sign up for our weekly email newsletter, KUM Digital Digest, on KUM.com. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Manglotnia. Thank you, Thomas. All right, coming up in the KSPN2 Sports Report, it's derby time. Marlins, better watch out for these guys. want now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Bubblegum Shrimp Company opens daily at 11 a.m. Located on Beach Road in the heart of Garapan. You can get $250 for your old sofa set right now. It doesn't matter if it stinks or if it's stained or if it's out of style. You can get $250 trade-in credit for your old sofa set. Get a new sofa set right now with no stink, no stains, and lots of style. Yeah! Yahoo! Come see us today at Dial Rent Own. When a sports fan. Friends sports fans, NMI men's tennis already has one gold medal in their pocket. Today, they added two more, possibly a third. The Pacific Games Tennis Championships are tomorrow, and the NMI has already booked their reservations. 
Rain suspended play this afternoon in Appia with the NMI advancing on three fronts, says Coach Race. All, all the matches today are now semifinals. And then, so Colin will play uh, for the gold medal tomorrow. And Robbie and Colin have advanced to the gold medal round. They'll play for the gold medal tomorrow. And Colin and Carol are in the are up 4-3 in their mixed double semifinal. If they win that match, then they will play for the gold medal tomorrow. So, Colin Sinclair is playing 12 matches in three days. For him, the rain is a blessing. Yeah, these last, uh, these last couple of days have been brutal. Um, but actually, we've had uh, only cold showers in Samoa. So I feel like that's kind of been uh, helping with my recovery. Colin is teaming and winning with Carol Lee in the mixed doubles. I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm really confident with this match today. Even though it's raining and going on and off, um, I think it will be a very good match. Last week... Before that gold medal match, it was gut check time for Robbie Shore, and he came through. Well, yeah, for sure, this pressure is going on in China. But it didn't come, so, trying to play well. Yeah, I'm definitely playing a lot better than it was a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, I'm happy. It's like keep playing. I have some good players, and it's happy to agree with my game. And yeah. He played really, really well. And uh, really super proud of, uh, of the way that he came through in that match and uh, beat a tough New Caledonia team uh, pretty easily in, in the second set. So, uh, you know, just to be in a situation here where we're, you know, contending for all these medals in the Pacific Games when we've never even won a medal before, it's like un un almost unbelievable winning that gold medal. It's like it took me about two days to really absorb that we actually won a gold medal. Well, the 35th annual Saipan International Billfish Tournament is coming up this weekend. 25 boat captains can say they are tournament champions. Truly a once-in-a-lifetime achievement. The tournament runs Saturday and Sunday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. with the weighing station at Smiling Cove Marina. Nine boats from Guam are already in the cove this morning. Saipan Fisherman Association President Gene Weaver expects a large turnout this year. Uh, estimated number of boats from Guam is 15. Uh, again, it depends on the weather. Uh, and also, uh, our vice president informed me there will be four coming from Tinian. So that's, that's a good number of off-island off participants for this tournament. How about Saipan boats? Saipan, I'm, I'm expecting maybe about 55 to 60 to enter. That's, that's my estimate right now. This year is different in that anyone can win a brand new boat engine and trailer. We got a 14-foot fiberglass boat with trailer with a 30 horsepower mercury donated by coral reef and mercury out of guam tickets are twenty dollars they'll be sold all the way up until monday night at the banquet uh, you can get your tickets here at the marina or if you know any of the sfa members just contact them they'll be more than happy to sell you a ticket saipan won last year Guam the year before. The two islands enjoy a friendly rivalry. Saipan Fisherman Association's Tony Scragg. Do you feel that there's any like feeling of a team like Team CNMI and Team Guam here? Uh, um, absolutely, I, I think so. Well, I mean, more so for the visitors, um, you know, because there's there, there's a smaller group of them uh, that come up, you know. To, uh, but they they do feel that there's a uh, uh, a Team Guam and you know, they're, they're all rooting for each other. He says it's a two-way street. And it, it's the same thing when we, when we go to, uh, when we go to Guam, you know, we, we're all, we're a team, you know, we're Team Saipan. Let's go, let's go take some of these prizes away from, from Guam. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yes. Tony, is it okay if I record this and use this tonight? This is awesome. Uh, sure. All right, well, good, because I just did. <laughs> I, I asked Gene. I asked Gene. No, Gene works at the courthouse, so I asked for his legal advice, and he said, go ahead and do it. So. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, we're within my property, so I, yeah, I, I gave the go ahead. <laughs> Dozens of boats go out. Only one, though, comes back as a champion, and that makes it a major lifetime achievement. Being one of those recipients in 2006, uh, the feeling coming in, knowing you have a big marlin and everyone on the piers watching you, it's just the drilling and rush that you get from something of, of 
bring in a, a nice marlin in, weighing it and knowing you have the biggest one. And then you have the bragging rights for at least a year, which is, is a good one. So when, normally when I introduce myself in other events, you know, whether, wh whatever it may be, I, I say, my name is Gene Weaver, winner of the 2006 <laughs> Saipan International Fishing Tournament. That's how I introduce myself most of the times. Last year's winner was Captain Alvin Iglesias, angler. Keith Torres gave a tremendous acceptance speech at the banquet that year. That was a, a pretty phenomenal acceptance that he had. And obviously, you know, he was, he was really excited after all the years that he participated in the, uh, in the tournament to get his name on that trophy. <laughs> I'm already looking for it. I hope he wins, to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> And here it is, ranked by KSPN2 Sports as the greatest winter speech in Saipan history. Prove our the name 107 came out from cockfight. It says 107 here, local. And in one it says logis. So we're 107. This is one of the hard, farthest time we ever tried this morning. It took us 10 years to put our name on this trophy. We're not here for the cash. And I, I'm pretty much sure that his sponsor eats on every one of you, and that is Jesus Christ! I love you. Yes. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise, or TRX, helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today's high was only 87. The heat index, though, because of the high humidity, was 102. The low temperature was 80. Humidity, 84%. Tomorrow, scattered rain, possible thunderstorms. East winds 10 to 20 miles an hour. High 87, low 79. Seas 46 feet. Sunrise at triple nickels. High tide, 8.09 in the morning. A low tide at 3.34. Sunset at 6.50. Ashley, ever been to a billfish derby? I have not. These are the big ones. I know you went to Tinian and, and mm -hmm. saw some... Uh, Small fish. Saw. Well, they're yeah. good size, but Decent nothing size. like this. No, but this, no, this is this going to blow though, you away. What I'm the best to time expect. to go is uh, Saturday, Sunday after 5 o'clock. The okay. fish has got to have to come in before 6. Okay. And a big one can come in any time, but most of the boats are coming in around 5 o'clock. Okay, so I'm going to make my way out there probably Sunday. I want to check Sunday it out. Sunday is when all, everybody's barbecuing. Yes, and best Everybody's time to go. out there, and then we'll know who really won. And yeah, Sunday's the, the ideal time. Yeah, so maybe we get to try some of that fresh fish right out of the ocean. It yeah. is fresh. I would love to bite of that. All right, thank you, Bob, and thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your night, and tune in tomorrow night at 6. Good night.